you're not here to accomplish anything. You're not here to be better than anybody else. You're not here to win. You're, all you have to do is just love yourself. I mean, truly love how magnificent you are. And that's what I meant when uh, um, <clears throat> St. Germain spoke to me and said, it's all you have to do is spend 15 minutes being in a state of appreciation for the I am presence that you are. Now, one of the things that the I am discourse has taught that I was having trouble with, with this whole idea of manifesting, is written on page 318. And I'd like to give this to you as we get ready to close. The student should constantly look within his human self and see what habits or creations are there that need to be plucked out and disposed of. For only by refusing to any longer allow habits of judging, condemning, and criticizing to exist can he be free. Are you hearing this? The true activity of the student is only to perfect his own world, and he cannot do it as long as he sees imperfection in the world of any of God's children. That includes the person who opened fire in Aurora. That includes Osama bin Laden. That includes Adolf Hitler. Any judgments that we have of judgment, criticism, and condemnation. And I wanted to manifest something so bad for such a long period of time, but the person that was involved in it, I kept having this sense of judgment toward this person. And it wasn't until I was able to say, I accept you for what you are. It's what led me to my father's grave in 1974. And I stood there after being sent there by a series of just absolutely impossible coincidences. I stood there on his grave after being filled with rage and hatred and anger and bitterness towards this man who would walk out on my mother and her three young boys, and I was the youngest. And I finally found out about his death, that he had been dead 10 years, but I went to his grave in 1974 on August the 30th. And as I walked away from his grave, because I really went there to piss on his grave, I was so just filled with rage in him. And as I walked back to the rent-a-car, something called me back, and I went and stood there looking at this plate on the ground that said Melvin Lyle Dyer, 1914 to 1964. Uh, and something came over me. In fact, we've made a film about it, <laughs> another film called My Greatest Teacher. And I was able to say to my father, from this moment on, from this moment on, I send you love. Who am I to judge you and condemn you? You did what you knew how to do, given the conditions of your life. And I accept you for it. Mark Twain once said that forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. On the heel that has crushed it. Enjoy it. My greatest teacher. Who was my greatest teacher? After that, my entire life changed. I stopped drinking. I started exercising. My writing shifted. I went back to New York. I was professor at St. John's University in New York City. I took two weeks to go down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, checked into the Spindrift Motel, and wrote a book called Your Erroneous Zones in 14 Days. Everything in my life after that shifted. My diet changed. My habits changed. Everything turned around because I got the rage out of me. Because in order to attract the elements that are going to bring you the ability to manifest into your life what you want. Remember how I opened this program. We do not manifest what we want. That comes from a place of missing. We manifest what we are. The angels who will guide you throughout your life will only be there for you when they recognize themselves in you. And they cannot recognize themselves in you and guide you when you are filled with hatred, anger, judgment, condemnation, bitterness, fear, 
anxiety, stress. You have to let all of that go and be love. Be in this place a perfect divine love. Love for everything and everyone on our planet. That's self-actualization at work. And the principles for bringing this about into your life are the last five chapters of Wishes Fulfilled. But basically, what it says is, the greatest gift that you've ever been given is the gift of your imagination. Your imagination is yours to be able to do anything you want with. You can place any thought in there with the awareness of I am. There's a very famous poem about that moment of Moses speaking to God. It says, Earth's crammed with heaven, and every burning bush a fire with God. And those who truly know take off their sandals, <laughs> while the rest sit round it and pick blackberries. It's your call. It's your call. So your imagination is the greatest gift that you've been given. And you can put anything in there. No one can tell you what can be there or what can't be there. Einstein said, imagination is greater than knowledge. And he said, if you want your children to have a great imagination, read them fairy tales. If you want them to be even smarter, read them more fairy tales. That's why I've written five children's books with that very idea in mind. The second thing is that you have to learn to live from the end. Whatever you have placed into your imagination, you have to act as if it already, already were your reality, independent of what anything or anyone else says. When I was told that I had this diagnosis of leukemia, I can't tell you how many people sent me um, condolence letters and sent me information about this, uh, about this disease. And, and how it was incurable and unfortunately this and fortunately I was given by my children a wonderful gift it's called an iPad um, and it's got this wonderful feature in it it's uh, it's called delete and uh, and then there's another feature of it it's called trash which is really great <clears throat> I'd like to have a button like that on me at any time so that anytime anybody brings any information to you you just push tra just push the trash button the third of these principles is the principle of, I call it, assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. You must be able to uh, feel it because every time that you feel something within your body, you give a instruction to your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is the part of you where you do all of your living. You want to redo your subconscious mind. Now, tonight, I'm going to give you guys such a gift. Tonight and every night for the rest of your life, I want you to take the last five minutes before you go off to sleep and realize that you are about to program your subconscious mind. All right? Your subconscious mind is most at home when you are unconscious, when you are asleep. If you spend the last five minutes of your day, which so many people do, reviewing all of the things that you don't like and all the things that didn't work out and how terrible you feel and who abused you and who was mean to you and who said this and they did this and you're constantly doing this kind of thing with your mind then you are programming your subconscious mind that when you awaken because you're now about to marinate for the next eight hours in your subconscious mind and then when you awaken you will rejoin the universal sub subconscious mind, the mind of God, from which we all originate. We're all just individualized personal expressions of that one thing that we call the Tao, or God, or divine mind, or soul, or spirit. But the Tao that can be named is not the Tao. So you want to be real careful about how you program your subconscious mind. This is from the book of Job. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Job 33, 15 and 16. When you are slumbering on your bed, 
He opens your ears and seals your instruction. What you place into your subconscious mind as you are about to go into this deep slumber is all dependent upon what you do the last three or four or five minutes before you go off to sleep. You want to place into your imagination whatever you have placed into the I am that that I spoke about earlier. I am well. I am content. I am peaceful. I am happy. I am prosperous. I am abundant. You just close your eyes and just listen to this meditation. <clears throat> it's from the book Three Magic Words. Here's what I'd like you to say to yourself at night. I know that I am pure spirit, that I always have been, and that I always will be. There is inside me a place of confidence and quietness and security where all things are known and understood. This is the universal mind, God, of which I am a part and which responds to me as I ask of it. This universal mind knows the answer to all of my problems. And even now, the answers are speeding their way to me. I needn't struggle for them. I needn't worry or strive for them. When the time comes, the answers will be there. I give my problems to the great mind of God. I let go of them, confident that the correct answers will return to me when they are needed. Through the great law of attraction, everything in life that I need for my work and fulfillment will come to me. It is not necessary that I strain about this. Only believe, for in the strength of my belief, my faith will make it so. I see the hand of divine intelligence all about me, in the flower, the tree, the brook, the meadow. I know that the intelligence that created all these things is in me and around me and that I can call upon it for my slightest need. I know that my body is a manifestation of pure spirit and that spirit is perfect. Therefore, my body is perfect also. I enjoy life, for each day brings a constant demonstration of the power and wonder of the universe and myself. I am confident. I am serene. I am sure. No matter what obstacle or undesirable circumstance crosses my path, I refuse to accept it, for it is nothing but illusion. There can be no obstacle or undesirable circumstance to the mind of God, which is in me, around me, and serves me now. This is the great lesson. Know this within you. When Herman Melville was writing Moby Dick, he wasn't writing about a man looking for a whale. He was writing about a, a man, Ahab, trying to find his higher, higher self. He said these words, For as this appalling ocean surrounds the verdant land, so in the soul of man lies one insular Tahiti, full of peace and joy, but encompassed by all of the horrors of the half-lived life. In every moment of your life as you leave here today, you have this choice. You can either be a host to God or a hostage to your ego. It's your call. Thank you. God bless you.